Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today I'm excited to feature a conversation with a Detroit-based interdisciplinary artist celebrated for her impactful assemblages and immersive installations. Her latest exhibition, uh, Ancient Future, is a journey through Afrofuturism, Black mythologies, time, so many different themes that are there. And the themes are presented through dynamic paintings, film explorations, and engaging installations. Please join me in welcoming the incredibly talented Jamia Richmond Edwards, the real JRE. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And... I have to do my Detroit native greeting. Um, what up, though? <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> what up, though? <laughs> I, I'm always very curious about, like, sort of the, you know, when people talk about culture, I'm always interested in that sort of stuff. And, you know, as a person who I'm born and bred Baltimore, East Baltimore, to be specific, okay. and my own people don't think I'm from here because I have this voice. They're yeah. like, you know. <laughs> Like, you don't say dummy or nothing, son. I was like, what do you mean? You, you, you know. <laughs> Y'all have some 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 interesting um, vernacular going on, but I, I rock with Baltimore. I respect the city, for real. 100%. And there, there is some, and we'll definitely tap into that a little bit. There is some, you know, some overlap and some connectivity between Baltimore and Detroit. So we'll definitely talk yes. about that a bit. But um, to start off, as is customary in doing this pod, I like to give folks the space to, you know, introduce themselves in their own words. I think, you know, I can get the, you know, the artist statement, I can get the yes. press release, the cut and paste <laughs> joint, but there's always something that's kind of, kind of missed. And I remember interviewing a person and she was like, well, my first title is human. And I was like, all right, cool, let's do it. So, you know, for you, could you introduce yourself and share a bit? Yeah. So my name is Jamia Richmond Edwards. I'm a artist. Um, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a designer, and you know, just to take it a level up, I'm a dreamer, I'm a world builder. And um, as of late, lately, I've been calling myself um, a cosmic stewardess where, um, and I don't know, can I use language on, in Please. this podcast? Okay, I feel like my part of my role is to take niggas where they need to go. So, um, you know, that's why I like the cosmic stewardess um, route um, as of lately, so. That's how I'll describe myself. I like it. I like I like the answer. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a it's a real answer, and and that's the thing that we try to do here. You know, I like, you know, you know, when people give you the very polished and refined. I don't want that. Yeah, no, it's 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 re it's um it's still polished and refined, but I also have to, you know, I'm 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 an eighties baby. I graduated from high school in two thousand, so you know, I feel like it's really important for my culture, um, excuse me, for my generation to add context to what niggas are and to not be, you know, to be unapologetic about that word. And so, you know, a, a lot of what inspires my work is just my love for the culture, the love for niggas. And, um, you know, it's a lot of respectability around that. And, you know, that's a conversation that's been going on forever. And as of lately, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to step into that and I'm going to stand on that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I appreciate that. And sure. yeah, I can say this, you know, in, in doing this right. And some of the folks that I have on and some of the folks I reach out to and some of the types of conversations that I'm interested in, that doesn't always fit into the whole right. respectability politics thing. And absolutely, you know, I'll say for me, like, yeah, you know. You can go to this person, you can go to that person. I'm actually the real person. You, you came to me at, you know, at the, at the third time or what have you. And, <laughs> and and I look at it from that way. And when I'm able to to speak with folks that sort of these higher, more taking themselves too serious sort of people, yes. get caught on, they're like, how do you get to them? So it's like my real dude. Yeah, because you're real. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm actually interested in them and not what they might represent, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Reflecting back a little bit, like, mm -hmm. you know, we we have these moments that are touch points, maybe super early, maybe, you know, a little bit later, what have you, that have a significant impact on what mm -hmm. we do creatively. So yeah. what is a moment or an experience for you? Because it'd be, it could be a sum of moments, but what's an experience for you that influenced you on your path as an artist, as that steward, as, as a creative? Um, so I'm going to actually touch on three. Um, the, the first one 
was when I was about 16 years old, I was taking a gifted and talented um, class um, for car design here in Detroit. And it was at Wayne State University, which is a university based here in the city. And the teacher, you know, kind of stood in front of the class and said, hey, it's an exhibition in a local gallery here. And he walked us, he took us on a little mini field trip, you know, which was right down the hall from the class. And in that exhibition, that's when I first saw um, Renee Cox's work. And it was the painting called The Liberation of Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben. That was the first time I believe, I just going back that I saw work made by a black person, um, let alone a black woman and like really like contemporary artwork. Yeah. And from that, you know, at that point in my life, I would go to the Detroit Institute of Arts, which is our, you know, fine art institute here. And I would I went often, but I never seen work <laughs> that reflected me. So that was like that I was just really overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, this is art. And I remember the teacher saying, Yeah, and that's the artist in the photograph. And I was just overwhelmed, like, oh shit, this is fly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and in terms of like you have to just think how impactful that was for me. My understanding of quote unquote fine art was um Van Gogh and you know, kind of Renaissance art. And again, I'm I'm com- growing up in the 90s, you know, listening to Pac, Bad Boys, you know, all those things. Seeing Renee Cox works is just like, oh, that's this is what fine art could be. Yeah. Um, so that get, kind of gave me that permission. Um, the second impactful moment was me when I entered into graduate school, which was um, 2010 at Howard University. And that's when my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy dropped with Kanye West. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was just oh, like, what do y'all realize? You know, for me, that was very paradigm shifting. And I also feel like it was very paradigm shifting for the culture. That was equivalent to, you know, a modern times thriller. I just was like, oh shit, the music, the art direction, just the it, it was it was so good. Um, so that had a major impact on me. And lastly, um, was the Beyonce concert. I have never, I wasn't a be I've I've you know, I respect Beyonce, but I'm not a fan. You know, she's she I had a couple of songs on my playlist of Beyonce, but um last year I went to the concert renaissance and oh my gosh i didn't go as a fan i went as a spectator like you know Mm -hmm. i'm I'm about to really take this in and it just was very paradigm shifting for me and so these moments that i just named to me were art um by black folks at the highest fucking caliber you know what i'm saying like high caliber very on vanguard very unapologetic very um thought provoking and so those three moments really um were life changing for me thank you wow um <laughs> wow i i think <laughs> You know, you talk with folks who are we're 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 in the same tribe, we're in the same age group. It's so definitely absolutely it's there. And you know, <laughs> definitely with um because you know, this is this is my medium, I guess the whole you know audio, but definitely with sort of like it, there's a there's a thing that I talk about, like what's what's the work being done, like degree of difficulty, things of that nature. And <laughs> you you definitely keyed in on a point. Um I went to Renaissance as a spectator as well. Yes. And I came out and like that was a spectacle. That was just uh, just going over all of the different things. And just like I had an experience. It wasn't like, oh, man, this song is this. I was like, no, no, yes. I had an experience. Yes. And, and that's the thing. And it's like, how do you capture that? How do you bottle that in whatever your respective thing is? That's why I, I, I took it back from that standpoint. <laughs> Same. And for me, the lesson that I received from Beyonce was it, it's her, but it's also she tapped the smartest, baddest individuals from every every genre. So just thinking from the dancers, just thinking from the costume designers. And I'm also a dance enthusiast. I follow dance culture very closely. And a lot of her dancers I've been following for years. Mm-hmm. And you know, for me, what I learned from that was like, yo, you find the best. And one of the things that I will say 
coming up in Detroit, just on my journey in general, I've been around a lot of, I call it a lot of G's and by G's, I mean geniuses. And we have to normalize that word. Um, I've been kind of, what do you call it? I've been really lucky to to always be in gifted and talented programs. I I was in music my whole life, dance my whole life, and I just literally been around like exceptional people. And you don't realize that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that to very recently till I started kind of like, okay, let me go out in the world. Let me be a civilian outside of this art world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, actually, people really do be fucking gifted. <laughs> it's a lot of exception um exceptionalism here and um, I think in this Western construct that we live in, we tend to kind of like downplay that, you know, or people are overachievers. It's the it's that that psychology that they downplay it. But what I realized with the Beyonce and even looking at the Kanye and Renee and it's just like, no, these people are brilliant mm -hmm. and they're surrounding themselves with the most brilliant people in their respected genres. So. Yeah, those moments were just kind of like <laughs> altering. Yeah, and, and and I think when you you step into that, when you own that, you're in circles that are of that. So yes, when when I'm doing this right, and there are yep. folks, it's seven hundred plus interviews at this point, and wow. when when I interview folks, I, I play the modesty game a little bit because it's just there. So it's uh -oh. almost in a self deprecating way. I do it. And, you know, I'm more like. Eh, you know, and because I'm a perfectionist, I do it from that standpoint, but I know where it's coming from sometimes too. And, I, and at times I just got to gas myself up and I'll talk with curators who will, and I'm like, they, they have a, you know, a certain vantage point that they're coming from, or even a certain type of guest, like the, you know, oh, you're a photographer or you're, you're a visual artist and, and so on and getting their perspectives on what I do. And when I talk with curators, they're like, you know, you're curating, right? Or what I tell like, yo, you need to stop saying you're trying to do something you're just doing. I had that conversation with Terrell Telford. He's like, you're doing it. He's like, just, you got it, bro. Or even to be very specific, when I talk to folks that look like me and you were in radio, who are in that, the sort of, they're like, why aren't you in radio yet? And I'm like, look, I, you know, I'm told that I don't fit the thing. So I'd rather just be independent and just be able to talk to the people I want to. That's the way. Yeah. You're doing it. You're yeah. doing it. Yeah. And it's really about one of the things that I've been talking about the past couple of years is what well, the term I came up with is like submitting to my genius. Mm. A lot of times we we fight it. You know what I mean? And we fight the ideas. We fight the grandeur. We fight the, you know, we, we fight a lot of things. And I, I'm 40. I'm 41. So, you know, you cross certain thresholds in life. Mm where you just like, actually, I just don't give a fuck what nobody say. I'm just about to do it. <laughs> and it's, um, you know, it's really, it's really liberating. So, um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm here and I'm, and I've, I've been surrounded around like really dope ass people, Yeah, you know, <laughs> I mean, the, the number thing is so, so real. I think, um, I, I play with numerology sometimes, but definitely, <laughs> when it's, look, it's, just, it's like all eights now. And, you know, when I, I start looking at things like I've, I've been podcasting since, you know, 2009 and, you know, wow. this podcast since 2019. So right there, you can see there's like a 10 years, like I was doing this for 10 years before I started. And, you know, with this particular podcast and, you know, this was an intentional thing. Like I had all this fun doing this kind of goofy comedy podcast, which while I enjoyed and was able to stretch my creative wings and do the pop culture thing, but I wanted to do something that spoke that, you know, sort of shared the story of the, the whole, just people taking weird shots at what I felt was a black city. You know, I was yeah. just like, I need to at least state my thing. So people know where I stand and I have it documented where I stand on this at this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to, I want to go a little bit deeper on, you know, sort of thinking of influence and, and inspiration, you yeah. know, whether it be from painting, whether it be from fashion, film, music, mm -hmm. diverse people, we have diverse interests. Um, where do you look for, for, for inspiration and sort of what are the themes that, that come up that are truly like, you know, yeah. interesting to you and why? Well, um, so well, I have two answers to that. The first one is, so I moved back to Detroit in what, 21, 2021. 
after being away for 22 years, you know, so I left high school in um, 2000 and I returned. So that's 21 years, excuse me. And um, being away and then coming back, I'm like, oh, shit, Detroit is so fly. Like, this is a this is a very unique city. And um, I realized that it's a lot of swag. It's a lot of cool. It's a lot of beauty and where I come from. And so I, I was became really inspired by that. Um, one of the things that's emerged in my work over the past couple of years is um, dragons and a lot of mythos, you know, what people call a mythos. But I didn't start doing dragons until I moved back to Detroit and I would walk downtown and I'm just like, well, I've never been interested in dragons and shit ever in my life. And as I began, like, just immersing myself in the city, I started noticing that the architecture here had dragons in them. It's a lot of fucking dragons and unicorns. So that perked up two things, okay? <laughs> One is, why I've been studying art my whole life. Why we want to talk about this? Who, who what, mm-hmm. what, what? One, what is this? <laughs> who designed this? <laughs> why is this a secret? Um, and more importantly, when I look at myself in relationship to the world and how the sort of energy that I vibrate on, I'm like, this is dragon energy. And from a very, from a very lame artistic perspective, when we think in terms of dragons, we think of like the Chinese dragon, you mm-hmm. know, like that's how we're, well, let me stop saying weird. That's how I've been programmed. And as I began noticing that, I'm like, oh shit, this is a whole other like paradigm of the Detroit dragon. So what does that mean? So I've been in that space of like, yo, I'm I'm a I'm a Detroit dragon. I'm about to explore this. Yeah. This mythos I can't find in a book. So I need to create it myself. So um, so I've been really inspired by the city. And when you just look at like the swag and culture and energy of the city, it's been kind of um reverberating in my artwork. Um, the other thing that I'm very inspired by uh, since really the past six, seven years has been genealogy. Mm. So I started doing genealogy in t- what I was 2017, 2016, right before I went to um to West Africa. And before I went, I was just like, you know, I'm about to hire a genealogist because <laughs> uh, I'm going to find my tribe. You know, I just <laughs> had this, this spirit just came up and, you know. And I remember I was up in Ghana and I received a call for my genealogist. And he was like, and this is guy from PG. This I was teaching at the time, a PG, a, a, like an old school PG dude. He and his wife just did genealogy for fun. And he called me. And he's like, I need you to call me as soon as possible. And I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in Africa. He about to tell me I'm adopted or some crazy shit. <laughs> so long story short, I get home and he tells me like, yo, this is the craziest shit ever. I started, you know, I started doing your genealogy and I'm up in like the 1600s. And what's interesting is your family was a never enslaved Two, they were in the South (laughs) three. What's going on? Like, this is interesting. So right then and there, that was very, it was, it was like that, that changed everything because I was on this hunt to understand. He didn't have answers. It was a quote unquote friend that I had at the time who was a history major. You know, she didn't have answers. So I had to go on this journey myself. So, you know, I've been, you know, since 2017 on this journey of just uncovering this genealogy, which essentially is uncovering who I am. And what I discovered was, as I began reading those names and those genealogical records, I began unlocking things within myself. Just even saying my ancestors' name, understanding the lands that they, you know, they occupied. And it really shifted a lot of things in me because I became a lot more, na- like, patriotic. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't, would never thought, you know, like me, I've always been along the kind of, you know, like a lot of black people, like we kind of like we tired, we are tired. But as I began understanding my genealogy, how deep it is in this country, all up, you know, Virginia, Mississippi, Arkansas, Detroit, St. Louis. And, you know, my family fought in civil wars, the war of 1812 and so forth and so on. I'm just like, you know, there's a lot of um, 
I have a lot of equity tied into this particular place. Yeah. So my work, as I began understanding that, it's, it's began to reflect in my work. And I see the transition of me, you know, going on this journey of understanding who and more importantly, what I am. So, yeah. yeah, I forgot your question. No, 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 no. That's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> okay. Um, because you know, it, it was it was giving me like you 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 were touching on the dragon portion. Yes. You know, it, it was like unlocking something. You start like looking at things, and you know, I, I wonder like sometimes when I have like a chance encounter with somebody, I'm like, all right, why did that come up? That was weird. And I'm like, I don't know if I connect to that. And you know, I, I was doing it. I don't I don't really trust things that you know. I, I wanted to do the genealogy thing and check into it a bit further. But yeah, I would talk to these different dudes, and I would just encounter them. They're like Egyptian dudes. And they would say, yeah, Bubakar. And I was like, what does that even mean? It's like bearded ones. And I was like, oh. And he's like, yo, you're one of our, our people. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm just from East Baltimore. And it's like, bro. Or, and you know, and I haven't gone too deep, but I did do the, the 23 and Me, and it definitely popped in like Egypt. And I was like, oh, well. And the other thing that it's in this vein, like I'm an Aquarius, right? And you know, I, I was joking. It's a Meek Mill lyric. It's like, I'm wavy like an Aquarius. I was like, yeah, you are. And, <laughs> and I ended up getting this book called uh, Ganbante. And it's about this this Japanese idea of perseverance. And they use that great wave off of Kanagawa as the example of this mm. is sort of the imagery for perseverance. And it's like, if you look close to it, people see different things. They see Fuji-san, they see Mount Fuji, they see these big waves, but in between the waves are the people canoeing and you'll get crushed by the ways if you stop canoeing. So perseverance, perseverance. Ooh. And I was like, I am that type of dude that I don't get bent out of shape and down on myself. I'm just a fighter naturally. Yeah. Perseverance. And I was like, this is resonating with me. And I just look at that book and I read that book and mm. they talk about tsunamis and all about these different things. And I say, Gambante. You, you, you've you've okay. done the work, so it's no such thing as it's, it's their equivalent for, like, good luck. Wow. It's like, you're going to persevere. You're going to get through it. You've done the work. Yeah. And I, like, I apply that in doing this. So whenever I'm feeling, and this is kind of a segue into this next part of the question. Yeah. When I'm feeling sort of uninspired or yeah. when I'm feeling like, all right, this might be a waste of time, energy, mm -hmm. money, resources, who's listening, things of that nature. Yeah. Just like, well, I'm following this. All of that other yeah. stuff is noise. So for you, within your work, within the process, because mm -hmm. we'll get to that next, but when when you're feeling, let's say, maybe not inspired or not motivated mm -hmm. to, to work, how do you how do you how do you get through that? How do you, do you get past that? Um, so I've been I've literally been doing art my whole life since I was like a baby. So I've never not done it. And I think oftentimes there's this idea or this notion that. I have to physically be painting or drawing in order to be working, right? And who actually told me this was Amy Sherrill, who yes. was in Baltimore. You know, I met her up in, in Baltimore. One of the things she told me was just like the research that you do, like that's part of your practice. <laughs> the rest, the research, the um, the investigations. And so when I'm not working, I'm like information mining. And what that means is I'm like reading books, I'm listening to lectures. I'll go like walking through the city and um, like you say, you're into numerology. There's no such thing as coincidence. I, I've like, I've, I'm a, what do you call it? Um, I'm a code reader, mm. you know, like even from this conversation is definitely related to the books that I've been reading, the information that I've read. And I'm sure we're going to encounter each other again in, you know, over the next few months and years and so forth, which is going to make things even more clear is um, I understand that this is all part of the, the journey. So I'm OK if I'm not painting because I'm constantly working, even conversations that I'm having with my husband, my children, my aunt, my niece. It's like this is all part of it and I understand it. So it's just being like very hyper aware of things. Yeah. Um I'm in Detroit right now, of course, and it's like the weather has been, whoo, it's brick. <laughs> what they call. Factual. It is, it is, it has been brick outside. And, um, you know, like I'm taking that in, 
you know, just my discomfort with it, my anxiety with it. And I'm just like, oh no, this is part. These are lessons that I'm gathering here. Because for me, it's just like, I, we, what, what I, how I, how my brain works is like, what is this? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? Like, why are we here? Like, why are we having these conversations? And, you know, one way to look at it is we're spiritual beings having this human experience. And, you know, people, a lot of people around me have been dying. I'm going to just be really afraid not to be dark. It's not to be dark. It's actually beautiful. You know, they came here, did their mission and they up out of here. So I understand how limited my time is. So I'm like very um, hyper aware of like the now, the moments, yeah. you know. Um, so I take it, I take it all in and um, understanding that my time here is part of a greater mission that I'm on. And that I'm just mining information. I'm mining information and experience for this particular mission, quote unquote, legacy, which is bigger than art, which is bigger than career um, that I'm, you know, leaving behind. So if that is, yeah. No, it, it is. And, you know, we we all encounter it because it's this this sort of push, maybe in, in, in our own unique ways, but it's this sort of push to, you know, you're, you're, you're not being successful if you're do not doing this. If you're not making something, it's oh. really working. And it's all bullshit. And, and bullshit, yo. And, 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 and that's the, the thing that I encounter when, you know, like you you, you were talking about um earlier. I, I know you had a background in education earlier. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been able to do that, you know, like recently in teaching podcasting to high school students. And I'm like, yo, and I'm taking this skill that I have a decade and a half of experience in and passing it on and being able to share that. And I've had folks tell me, oh, why are you doing that? You're wasting your time, bro. You're not 10 X in it. And I'm like, I'm getting something out of this. This this is enriching the soul, even yeah. when they act like they hate me. And it's like, Mr. Rob don't know nothing. And I was like, I don't know everything. <laughs> but it, but I, I, I feel something, I get something out of it. Or even things like, I'll share this with you. I haven't even talked about this mm -hmm. yesterday. I filmed um, a scene for um, a short film. This is the second time I worked with this young director. He's um, actually the son of a guest that I interviewed. So, nice. so in that next generation, right? And I've yep. been in his two projects. His like two first sm uh, small film, short films. Nice. I played myself both times. Okay. I'm the same fit each time. It's I love it. It's great. It's like, look, I need to be in the third one. Just me looking different again. But... It, it it's so enriching for me, like to to be involved and to feel like I'm helping you achieve something and you've thought of me in this way. Yeah. There's something there that doesn't feel like it's a waste of time. That doesn't feel like, why am I helping you? It leaning lending a hand feels important to me. Absolutely. And what I think that particularly our generation is doing, it was a term that was going around years ago. That a lot of people had issues with and it's it's called decolonizing our mind mm -hmm. and what that means is just like we just had to we got to figure out how to think and move and live and outside of um this western subverted ass construct this upside down world that we've inherited and there's this thing where just what value is and currency and what this society has tricked us into believing is that like the green, the USD or the Euro is more valuable than like time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And which is absolutely invaluable. So um, which is why you, I understand the thought process of, you know, like your per the person saying like, yeah, forget them kids, like mm -hmm. whatever. That's not important, but it's like, yo, that is the most important thing. <laughs> the most important thing that that you can that you can do so even taking that and even going back to your original question and really since 2020 you know that was the time that we were all at home i was like really thinking about this of like what's valuable and even like the time to yourself getting to know your bo your body your mind like yeah. what does that look like and it's actually really fucking frightening it was really frightening for me um um so i've been i'm I'm cool with time, you know what I'm saying? And even like the 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 uncomfortable aspects of it. So yeah, it's um, you know, that that you, you talk about 
2020. That's a, I think that's a, you know, you, you, you go through something, it's like, I need to tag this particular thing right here. And yeah. that is that's sort of, that is sort of when this podcast took off. People were home and people wanted to share their stories. And it wasn't yeah. any being advantageous sort of thing of I have a captive audience. It was more so people want to connect. And I even add to one of the things you were touching on, at least from my perspective, I think, you know, we're in a spot, you know, our generation will have, I guess, is in this spot where we're, we remember when the internet and social media, all of this stuff popped off to the degree in yes. which it's a part of your everyday life. We can speak that language and also be there is like, oh, especially from an, I guess, an educational perspective of like, hey, it's not going to be bad. You can figure things out. We've gone through it. You know, like I remember 9-11. I remember how everything was terrifying. I remember the DC sniper. I remember all of these different things. I remember yeah. that crash and student loans and all of this different stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I find like, and, and I encounter it talking with some some artists, some guests and so on, that there isn't that sort of gambate attitude. It's sort of this woe is me sort yeah. of thing, or even, well, this person is doing this. So I need to do the same thing to be successful, losing identity and losing maybe the reason why you're doing something. And, yeah. you know, I rally against that so much because it hits this area. And I made the the subtle jab, uh, you know, the real JRE earlier, because <laughs> as soon as that deal happens, every dude with a microphone thought they were Joe Rogan. And it's just like, do your own thing. Are you, are you, you want to talk about thumbtacks? Thumb talk about thumbtacks if that's what you're into. That's what we lost in this internet age. And as we are, we're we're the new elders. We know we the new aunties and uncles. <laughs> um, and I think that that insight is really important. And the thing about the internet, it's like, how how real is it? You know, I always ask myself that like this, when I log off, none of that shit exists. Right, right. Like you guys go disappear when I'm like logged out. <laughs> it really is. So you have to, so I have to ask myself often, like, like really question it. And I do this go back and forth of deleting the app and then coming back, deleting it. Um, Cause it's, and I noticed this in 2020 with, I had my, my, my youngest at the time was like three years old and you know, everybody was losing their damn mind. You know, you had Trump and all of this stuff. And he didn't have no clue of what was going on. And when I, when I say that baby was so happy and free and I'm just like, oh shit, he's not plugged into this. So I make it, I try to be really intentional about unplugging um, from that matrix and really tapping into my own, which is yeah. a, when I go into like the world building and stuff. So, yeah. So this, this next question was not in there. Um, I, and I think it's a good one because it connects to what you were just touching on. I'm very, very curious. It connects to a degree to what you were just touching on. I'm very curious on like, I think creativity when it comes to like young folks, because they're unencumbered with these different feelings that we yeah. encounter as we get older of like criticism or, you know, ego or even critique yeah. or comparison. I think, you know, younger folks create to create. I've used this um, uh, example multiple times when I was like five, I, I had like the huge glasses, like just me, but smaller. Right. And I was an MC. I was on stage, like doing masters of ceremony. Right. Okay. And <laughs> that notion is now is nearly 39. It's terrifying. So, you know, but I think then I didn't know any better. I was just like, yeah, whatever you say, I, you like me because I'm doing it. Cool. You know, and I think as adults, we we have to find ways to tap back into it. As we have people who incorporate play into their process yeah. or just make it a point to just, I'm just going to mess around. I'm just going to have a coloring book here. And just, to, you know, what do you think around like sort of, you know, creativity from when you're younger to as you, you know, yeah. get older? Right. That's, you see it in my work. You see when I tap into it, which was around 2019, 2020 area where I just was giving myself permission to like dream Mm. And one of the exercises that I that I go through daily is like, where can I how how far can I stretch my imagination? So when I say world building, I'm literally thinking about world building because like I'm tired of Earth. I'm not gonna lie. And I'm just like, somebody gotta think about the new frontier. And 
this assignment that I've given myself is just like, well, what does that look like? And how comfortable can I envision myself like, you know, in these things that I've never experienced or in, in landscapes that I've never seen before. So it's just, it's a med, it's actually a meditation, mm. you know what I'm saying? And, um, and it's me meditating and, you know, I'll give you an example of exercise, just like, well, what happened if I could fly? So let me kind of walk through that process in my mind. Yeah. And, you know, I've been painting these dragons. What would I let, let me go in my mind? And it's it's the question is what, you know, the mind, what is the mind? Mm-hmm. You know, that's some powerful shit because everything that exists came from the mind. It literally, we were pulling it out of the ether into this realm. So somebody has to be a dreamer, right? Um So that's the exercise that I've been doing. And particularly going back to these dragons, because that's where I'm kind of like obsessed that I have like all these books. I've been reading um, 14th century, 13th century literature in relationship to dragons because I'm like, no, it's something there. And I see the the story of the dragon um, very allegorical to, to black people. Right. Um, and it's definitely a connection there. Um, but in order for me to understand that I have to envision myself in that world, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, it's, it's a lot because with social media and the world, you're so inundated by like images and, the. Uh, you know, I'm still thinking about, you know, what's going to happen to Diddy and blah, blah, blah. like, you know, I got to kind of, <laughs> I got to remove myself from that and allow myself to dream. So I think it's really important that we not not just with the with the children, but as adults, we have to cultivate the act of imagination, particularly Mm -hmm. with black folks. Um, You know, I would, you know, just think in terms of like um, Lucas created um, Star Wars. Right then and there, you young <laughs> little white boys could see them. Everybody love that movie, but I'm just saying like mm-hmm. in terms of representation, they saw themselves outside of this planet. Mm-hmm. They were able to see automatically. You already know. And my question is, what does that exist for people who look like me? We know in these, sci- these sci-fi films, these futuristic films, these epics, there's an absence of niggas. I'm going to just be honest with you. And oftentimes it's through a subservient that mm-hmm. slave lens. So, you know, in order, one of the things that I had to do was free myself up from being a slave and free myself up from being a victim. And that also included the imagination, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because as, a, you know, I, if I'm, if I'm able to imagine myself going outer space and, and to, you know, imagine myself with dragons, that's not, that's not a slave, you know? And if my ancestors, when I'm looking at this ancient art, these older arts, there was black folks on there too. Right. We never was slave. We, it, so it is just like, eh, you know, it, it's some, it, it's some, it's some things there. So um, I, I think that our imagination ha- was clipped at some point, especially with, how we were educated here slave 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 victim 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 mm-hmm. black man getting killed black man getting killed so i i don't watch television i don't watch anything really pertaining to pop culture because i'm like i can't fucking take trauma and a lot of the shows that's for instance that's based on detroit is like you know the doughboys yeah. and stuff you know what i'm saying and i'm like that's not like i have friends and family that was like murdered and so i don't watch that but you just think in terms of like the platform not hating on 50 cent because i think it's room for all those things to exist and i think it's important that they exist but just think in terms of what has our cultural attention mm-hmm. meanwhile i'm watching people globally extract <laughs> literally mm-hmm. extract um our essence the the delectable negro like literally consuming us so my thing was while like my personal journey is if I know that I'm up for consumption, right? Mm-hmm. And I understand the role that I play in the world and in the art world, it's really important for me to like get ahead and to create my own journeys, these my own epics, my own adventures versus letting 
y'all put me on like this love and hip hop box, you know, not hating on it. Yeah. yeah. Important. That's real. But you also have to have these other things that exist as well. So um, I, I, the imagination is everything. And, you know, it's really important for me to make sure that my legacy and my kids and, you know, people coming behind me like to see themselves, to see us in our nobility, to mm-hmm. see us at our greatest. And I just want to say this, what, what one of the things that, like, was really shocking and really jarred me in 2020 as everything was unfolding. And I had this thought like, yo, this is us at our worst. Mm-hmm. I just imagine like I'm coming b- born and raised in a crack epidemic. <laughs> it was rough. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But some, like just constant warfare, like, like li- living in a li- real live war zone. And I'm like, yo, this is us at our worst. Imagine us at our greatest. Right. So for me to have, it's important that I can em- envision that somebody has to create that versus Hollywood, you know, like they have their particular role and we can't complain about it. Like, oh, they only show us like this and they only show us that's their job. That's what they supposed to do. Who's going to create the new Disney? Yeah. <laughs> let, let me throw let me throw this one at you when it comes to pop culture. And yeah. I got a few questions after this. I definitely want to ask you before going to the rapid fire. Uh, it, so you know when when we we have those those films that come out because I'm, I'm I watch a lot of movies and I do a lot of film reviews and things of that nature and uh-huh. I I think about you know genres that don't get the respect right for for what they do and the ones that sort of wow we love seeing this new black creator here it's like you're throwing us a bone in a genre that you don't really like you notice know, it's usually horror or comedy it's never drama it's never sort of epics and things of that nature is something that's almost fantastical. You know, we talk about, you know, Jordan Peele, he sits between both, you know, horror and, and, and comedy or even Nia DaCosta with the, you know, the Candyman uh, remake or what have you. Movies that I've seen, movies that I've talked about, movies I've, I've, I've had feelings on. And, you know, I'm almost looking for that real, like, can we make this black with it feeling authentic? That's the question that I try to do. I, I do that sort of barometer. Like I really get into the minutia of movies and okay. I like the stuff that I like. I like stuff that is from a certain era. Like, look, put on Robocop, you know, old Detroit, let's do it. Absolutely. But at the, but at the same time, then this is the his, history of it, right? The movie came out almost two and I should not have seen it as early as I seen it. I was like, <laughs> yo, why well, don't like none of the black guys in this? That was literally my thing as a kid, except for this one dude in Robocop 2 who reminded me of an uncle that never existed. When you know that drive and he peels off, he just it's a throwaway line. He's like, they're about to beat somebody's ass. And I was like, that's a real black guy right there. <laughs> that's all of our uncle. <laughs> but when you get to sort of the yeah. you you like the you know the 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 stern black archetype, sort of police chief and things of that, but that's a that's a that's an archetype. Um, but there's no the only person that was kind of a black person was probably the annoying person in the first movie that the the bad laugh. Absolutely. And, you know, and they're all stage actors. You learn. You're like, oh, you're classically trained. You're doing this for the role, for the heat. Yeah, but I think that that's you. We got to just think about it in terms of like, and I will argue that's the, that's across all genres. That's across music. That's across fine art. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's across. Mm-hmm. You can go every. You can check it off everywhere. And I think, again, I don't think it's anything wrong with those things existing. They should exist because that's the role. And when we talk about propaganda, they have a job to do. But somebody is some some of us have to unpack who the proverbial they are. Okay, Mm -hmm. it's not everybody's job or even mental capacity to unpack who the proverbial they are. And more importantly is what are we go do? It's mm-hmm. just like, it's the, and that's when it's, it's becoming more, you know, more solution based than like, you doing this to us, you doing this to me, you doing this to, which is, again, I have, and I'm not, it's not to diminish any things because I have friends and family who dedicated their lives to activism and you got to stay on their necks. Yeah. Okay. That's not necessarily part of my ministry. My ministry is part of like, I need to figure out. <laughs> Why you on a next? Somebody got to build the new frontier, and I and a lot of that has to deal with imagination. 
And it's really important. And that, and that imagination is going to reverberate in all genres. You mm. know what I mean? Because mm. one of the things that happens is folks be copying. You know, that's just the nature <laughs> of the information. Yeah. You know, I see my influence on the art world. I see my influence on the culture. Just like I'm getting influenced by everyone and so forth. My thing is like, I need to just keep pushing us forward. So, um, yeah. <laughs> that's it's, it's a good point. That's a really, that's a really good point. Seeing sort of what that impact is. And I think that's why it's, you know, important to kind of be out there. And, you know, when yeah. I, when I do this, I'm like, what do I have to really contribute? You know, it's the thing with the naysayer thing. Right. And yeah. think about it. I was just like, I'm a black dude from East Baltimore that has this background. My perspective matters. And I would imagine other people have similar perspectives or want yep. to know what that perspective is. And yeah. it, 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 it has some validity. It has a space and, you know, it connects and, and, and people rock with it. And the other thing that I learned in doing this is a lot of times this is the first time somebody was interviewed. A lot of times this is the first time somebody was actually asked about their work and not sort of what their identity stuff is. And, you know, it may be a part of the work, but it shouldn't be paramount and above the work if they're talking about the work. And it's about playing your part, like play, play your role. Everybody can't be Jordan Peele. Everybody can't be Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody can be Kahende Wiley. Yeah. You know? And there's com there's comfort in that. And that's the thing with coming up in age is um, is like understanding the role that I play and not necessarily having a certain popularity or whatever, or this person got that, like, no, I'm here. I, I influence the influencers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's going to necessarily trickle down to the mass. Yeah. Populace. It ain't meant to, but if I, if I influence the influencers, <laughs> that's yeah. some powerful shit. You know, we know the rooms and the people that we conversing with, you know what I'm saying? And how our ideas. So, that's why it's really important for me to make sure my imagination is just like out out there. And yeah. that means kind of being a conspiracy theorist, being <laughs> a weirdo, yeah. being a freak, you know, whatever you want to call it. But it's like, no, some I gotta push it. So I, I say that thing like, look, I was all of that before it was cool. So let's let's keep it in the court. Hello. Like <laughs> <laughs> so so let me, let me go into this this last bit here. I okay. definitely want to talk a bit about ancient future. Um, and so, you know, you, you've touched on some of the themes that I imagine are are in there, you know, world, world building, mythology, cyclical time. So, you know, telefying folks, the listeners, you know, mm -hmm. about sort of the exhibition, like describe it to the folks. And is what's the yeah. significance of the title? Absolutely. Um, so I have an exhibition currently, currently up at, Museum of Contemporary Art, North Miami, which is in Miami. And it opened last October, but we had a really large reception during Art Basel. Um, so I was titled Ancient Future, one by um, a book that I have in my possession by an author named Wayne Chandler, and um, who deals with a lot of ancient Egyptian, you know, mythos and cosmology. That's what that book is. Um, but I, I like the name of that word, um, excuse me, I like the title of that book. And I discovered that it's a lot of things called ancient future. And even thinking about growing up back to the future, it's literally, it's another iteration of ancient future, which really speaks to the, again, the cyclical nature of time. And what I mean by cyclical nature of time is like, we go through these, these cycles and even what we are in now you know, which appears to be like a lot of just the world is just falling apart. <laughs> Shit is just going wrong. But me as a person who's like the observer, I'm just like, yeah, no, we going through another cycle and we we actually go be all right. So what I one of the things about like me and my practice, like I'm, you know, I mentioned like I'm the weirdo. I'm the because I feel that to some degree I'm a seer, like I can see into the future. You know what I'm saying? Like I things that I first like I knew this shit was going to happen, and even understanding, um, you know, by the time they picked this work up for my studio, that's when things like war, chaos, this is a lot of weird stuff going on. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is perfect. This is <laughs> this the the work is landing at a perfect time because I didn't want us 
to get lost in that and understanding that, you know, some of the work has, it has the dragons in it. It has the largest piece called um, the dark night of the soul is this figure kind of um, thrusting outside of the, um, the firmament <laughs> into the cosmos um, surrounded by the goddess, the ancient goddess Newt and it's just that reminder of like, yeah, all this shit is happening in the world, but we good. Right. And um, it's really important that we understand our place in the cosmos. And even when we've been going through shit since we since the beginning of time, y'all, it's been worse. I'm for real. Like our answer. Just think of what our aunt we going through this. We had the, the, the pandemic. I'm not saying it is it's traumatic, but when you begin like really reading the history, it's just like, ooh, shit, this is we come. <laughs> This is we entering in a golden age because it was it was rough. OK, um, so it's kind of that reminder, because I also understand how black people are utilized in these times. Like they want to get us riled up and it's just like, no, we the, we have to think primordial. We have to think magical or this is how I'm this is what I'm proposing. And within this exhibition, I have these very like, you know, fantastical mytho, mytho, mythological inspired pieces. But I also did a series of drawings um, that I just extracted, like things that were happening throughout the year. Because when we talk about ancient future, we're thinking in terms of ancient past, ancient future, but what about the now? And so one of the smaller drawings I did was one of Shikari um, Richardson going across the finish line. And then I did a drawing of Simone Biles. And what essentially what I was talking about was like, yo, isn't it interesting how the world is literally falling apart and niggas is getting faster? <laughs> I'm gonna, and that's all I'm gonna say right there. Just think about that. <laughs> We jump in higher and these and this is through women. Yeah. Now I'm not, I do, I don't really watch a lot of sports, but my husband be showing me stuff like, yo, look at this boy, like literally defying gravity. Right. Like, whoa, wait a minute. So it's just like it's to bring that context here. Um, because what's going, what's happening is you have the world is like, no, you need to be an activist. You need to put your neck on the line for the world to be, to move forward. And I'm like, this is my activism right here. Telling black folks, like, we got this. You right. just got to keep being great, being imaginative and staying. And we, you know what I'm saying? So we are heading somewhere. And, um, I saw in part of this, I did these paintings and I also created a film titled Ancient Future um, where I commissioned these dancers from Atlanta um, who was choreographed by um, um, Janir Kidd and Byron Joseph, who I attended Jackson State with. So I also attended Jackson State at HBCU for undergrad and I was in the band. And we, they choreographed this beautiful piece um, that I, in the music I commissioned my son and um, to create the soundtrack for it. But in this film that I created was, I was literally evoking the spirit of the dragon. So you have these girls dancing in these capes. I mean, you know, some beautiful badass um, choreography. And it's just like, no, we, and I really shifted to perspective, like, yo, we are in the cosmos. And oftentimes we think our, you know, we understand one perspective is we are floating rock in the middle of the cosmos. You don't think that we have anything to do with like all this energy that's happening in the world. You know what I'm saying? And so I just, it was just a reminder, a, a very, um, not a subtle reminder, it was a big reminder of like, no, we, 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 we kind of literally above this. And it's really important that we push forward. Um, so yeah, I created this body of work that I'm very, very content with. And um, it's a stepping stone. And what's interesting is it's like over the, since then, I've, I'm calling it, I literally fucking upgraded. Like I'm looking at these new pieces I'm creating and I'm like, damn, this is better than what I was just creating. Mm -hmm. So I'm steady looking at, I'm looking ahead. And by me looking ahead is also me. If I'm like instigating this, like, yo, we, we some, we some badass people. We, mm -hmm. we are, we are some magical folks. I have to be able to, to, to show that. I have to be able to demonstrate that in real time. So that's 
that's how I design my life is, you know, I'm going to be talking my talk. I'm going to be creating this work. And I'm literally like the mad scientist on myself, on my imagination. Like, let's push it. And not only imagination, it's, it's skill. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's the, that's the show. That's, that's great. And just, <laughs> I mean, no, it, it's, you know, imagination is, has been the theme, you know, this, this conversation I feel. Yeah. And, you know, I think in, in, before I go into this, this rapid fire portion, um, I, I, I think it's important because like, when you, you look at stuff from the past, again, going with the sort of cyclical nature of things, yeah, you get things from like the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, even yeah. to a degree in the 90s. I, I think when business starts to become part of things, it kind of stems that creativity and we, we kind of yeah. rebrand it. So like when I think of the 70s, I think like, yo, there was some futuristic wild things happening. And then you have, oh, they were druggos. I don't care. I, I'm, I'm just saying they were stretching sort of the boundaries. And, you know, uh, I, I used to play with this idea of, you know, you dabble, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, uh, different drugs, what have you, weed, LSD, whatever. And you're able to tap into something in, into sort of all of your insecurities floating away and you're just doing it. And it's like, use it as a, at least it's the thought I used to have, and I think it still applies, but use it as a entry point, as the the key to unlock sort of your your true you and, you know, have something there to create with, you know, have like, you know, I used to get zooted and then edit podcasts or work on music and things of that nature. Yeah. And, you know, it was just something into in it. And then you would wonder, at least I would wonder, like, how the hell did I do that? Oh, you're sober right now. You got to You got to go back, G. <laughs> You got to go back and you when you just think in terms of like, you know, we indigenous people and we're we're speaking from very contemporary times. But you got to think about it. This was like way back when we if me being an artist, I would be considered like a shaman ish type of person. I'd be up taking my shroom teas and kind of like pontificate like we do. We do it now. We're just not a we, we not. I mean, we're aware, but we're not aware of what's happening. And one of the things that I've observed was you see how each throughout the time, you see how the drugs influence the art of that time, particularly, you know, you could say fine art, but let's look at music. So just think in terms of George Clinton and them taking the psychedelics and then then you had that goddamn crack at era. Then you got the lean and now you got the mumble rap like, you know, it's very much. Um, there is a parallel with the drug use, but one of the things that's fascinating because I'm in Detroit, which is legalized cannabis, and they starting to legalize shrooms. Um, they began legalizing shrooms here. And I'm just like, that's actually a good thing because people are always, we always going to look for drugs. And, you know, just when you look at the ancient Egyptian temples, they was taking coke and we they were smoking weed and doing coke like it ain't whatever yeah. <laughs> that's the, we got we gotta we everybody on drug we know we big pharma all that shit but anyway um so i'm like oh yeah we are about to move back into that golden age as shrooms kind of began trickling down and i'm as i'm hearing getting back tapped into like the streets of what's going on and the culture is brothers and sisters are beginning to use that but we know that that um you know, the lean is, 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 oh my gosh, it's taking the, it's the new crack. It's the yeah. new crack epidemic and look at the music. So I'm, I'm definitely like, let's, let's fucking normalize it and let's get, um, let's make sure that we normalize using it for spiritual reasons. And we have to begin, um, normalizing or defining what spirituality means to us outside of, you know, that colonized <laughs> construct. So, so yeah, I'm with you, bro. That's real. So let me, let me move into these last rap, these rapid fire questions. And this is, okay. this has been, this has been robust. Um, <laughs> so, you know, as I say to everybody, don't overthink these, um, which okay. I, 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 you, you do this, we're the same page. So, you know, <laughs> get into it. Let's go. And um, <laughs> it's kind of one of those things that look, I said what I said, you know, it's kind of that. Um, Period. So okay. here's the first one. Um, who do you admire? Mm. Who do I admire as of lately? Dang Dash. Okay. Dash Master P. Um, those that's those like 
I respect them and I respect them for um, their sense of um, just being self-made men and independent, you know? So um, right now that's who I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I have, I have those hoop dreams of like being a self-made individual and not necessarily out in the system, you know, like, you know, just think of P he created his own phone line. He got his own cereal, the rap snacks and <laughs> yeah. his ramen. Noodle, he, he created his own oodles and noodles. So, <laughs> um, there's a part of me that like desires that. Absolutely. 100%. Aside, aside from money, Right. I think money is a bit obvious and I, I have relationships with money. And one of the things you were, you were touching on earlier of sort of, you know, some of the advice that folks throw around and it's like, yeah, bro, you got a 10 exit. I was like, nah, you know, communities, universe is going to sort me out. And that's the way I've been riding this wave on from, from your perspective. Right. What are three things that artists need, you know, like excluding money? But what are three things that yeah. that artists need? Um. You need gumption. And what I mean by gumption, of course, is just courage, unapologetic. You got to have, you got to, you got to, to believe in yourself. You That take a lot of courage. <laughs> you know, yes. you know how many artists fucking exist? That's like saying you want to be a rapper. You know, right. like you, you one, you got to have courage to, um, that's first and foremost, like, okay, I ain't scared. You can't be scared. It's like going into the honey house. All right. You ready? All right, cool. Um, the second thing is you have to have a tribe and um, you have to find your people of because there's this kind of romanticized idea that the artist is the lonely kind of like, yeah, we in our time. We are in our head a lot. We spend a lot of time by ourselves, but you have to have a tribe of folks who are going to challenge you. Iron sharpens iron. Okay. So that's first and foremost. Like you got to have a dope ass tribe. And um, lastly is authenticity is be yourself. I think oftentimes people will be again, trying to chase the Kahende Wiley. <laughs> and I'm not saying that I wasn't like, uh, you know, that was the, he was the benchmark and even like a Carrie James Marshall. And then you have a Amy Cheryl um, is that's their version of themselves. No one fingerprint is the same. Mm -hmm. And it's like, be your authentic self, be tell your story. And um, you don't have to like, you know, fit in and get in. I think one of the things that I learned, like the more I can understand and tap into my truth, yeah. there's going to be somebody out there that's going to fucking relate to it. So that's great. That's great. Yeah. Yes. So, so important. And it's, it's funny. I got to replace one of my rapid fire questions because you answered it in that piece. So, oh, okay. so, so good on you. Um, the, what is your favorite color at the moment? Because I know you artist types. <laughs> yeah, I know all the colors. Um, I'm like really into this neon pink. Okay. I am uh, in this neon pink. <laughs> I, I asked a um, illustrator last week who in her bio is like, pink is, of course, my favorite color. So I had to frame it differently. I was like, which shade of pink? And she was like, ballet slip of pink. I was like, all right, you thought about this. I appreciate I you. Slipper pink, But I'm going to tell you how cold it is because like pink is the color of the interior. Pink is the color of the pussy. You know what I'm saying? The interior. Of the, like it's some <laughs> that's a fire ass color. And I don't think that we talk about like the depths of pink. It's like, oh, girl, pink. And you know, like from a very like basic, it's like, no, get, when you open up the body, the flesh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is why Cameron wore it. Now I understand more. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. yes, yes. As a fellow um, Aquarius. <laughs> it's a, oh, he's a fellow, okay, so I'm a, I'm a Cancer, Virgo rising. Um, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, so, it's it's pink and i've been actually i've been like mining like i'm trying to find new colors in the my in the imagination like i'm literally trying to find new colors so i'm a mid-tone guy it's it's always like yeah. ox like ox blood or something like that okay. well, I'll the blood of my enemies it's it's a yeah. running bit. uh <laughs> you know the, the, or, or, it's, or it's like the olive joint but it's just like i try to find something that's complimentary and also it speaks to I think sort of my personality, like I'm always 
gray somewhere at the midpoint is always where I'm at. And um, sometimes it could be a darker gray, but it's just like, look, there's room for exploration. That's the way I look at it. Um, so this is the last one. And I kind of, before we got started, asked a little bit about um, about food or what have you. So I definitely want to ask you this as I'm curious, like I'm a guy, you know, I'm always snacking on pistachios. That is my go-to snack. Do you have a go-to snack? And if so, what is it? Woo! I'm, yo, I'm going through this pickle phase. And when I mean by pickles, pickled, pickled okra. Really? Oh, God. I, we an okra household. Like, my husband is really into okra. He did, like, a whole dissertation on okra. Like, you know, it's it's a really... we You know, Black people have a very unique history with okra. But um, pickled fucking okra. That's <laughs> it. That's my go-to. And um, that's it. Like, I, I used to have a real bad, like, I'm calling it a cookie demon, man. It's like, I have, like, serious addiction to sugar. You know, like, we, everybody does. Yeah. And, you know, I, I I began thinking about that. I hate to go, like, on a quick tangent. But just real quick, just think about, like, in the 80s, growing, going to school, it was just like, say no to drugs, right? Say no to drugs. But right. meantime, they're pumping sugar, sugar smacks, Cookie right. um, what's the damn lucky charms? Yeah. Like, and we know that sugar is some that's the most addictive outcome. That's what's taking, taking us out. You got dialysis clinics on every other fucking corner. And shit. So I've been like intentionally trying to fight my addiction to sugar. And like the, the pickles help. So. I mean, I do like a nice like chocolate chip walnut cookie. I can't stunt. But once you start seeing it, right, you know, like it can't it can't be unseen, you know. And I remember I was sitting there because you always hear like, yeah, you know, stay away from salt, black guy diseases. And really, it's the sugar that causes a lot of these different things. And you look at it and it's like, all right, I'm eating these chips. You look at the nutrition facts and all of this because they don't teach nutrition in school. Um, and you look at it and you're like. All right, these are chips. So you should be worried about sort of the fat and the salty because they're fried. Yeah. So and then you see like there's actually sugar in these too. It's like, oh, you snuck this in. I don't even notice it. It ain't nothing like a good cookie, man. I've that's my yeah. If I could, I'll I'll indulge, but you know, I'm trying to be healthy. So uh, I <laughs> um <laughs> so you know, that's pretty much it with the real questions, okay. the rapid fire questions. Um All so right. One, I want to thank you so much for coming on to this podcast. This has been a joy and a treat. And um, and two, I want to invite and encourage you to share with the listeners where they can check you out, follow you, um, you know, uh, the exhibit, everything. The floor is yours. Yeah, absolutely. Find me on really the social media, Instagram and, and Facebook. That's where you can find me. And if you, you know, I've, I'm not new to this. I've been around for a minute, you know, it, it's, People will get shamed for this or I've been shamed, but it's like, yo, Google me. <laughs> Google me, you know, oh, yeah. I've been, I've done like several interviews and it's good to see, you know, just the evolution of, you know, my thought process and my practice. And so, um, yeah, that's where you can follow me, you know, DM me. I'm pretty like open, you know, I'll say what's up back. So, yeah. Well, what up though, you know? <laughs> what up though? <laughs> And there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Jamia Richmond Edwards for coming on to the podcast and just really getting into this, this deep conversation with me. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there's art, culture, and community in and around your neck of the woods. You've just got to look for it. Mm -hmm.